I know what you're thinking, Amanda, you're not a streamer and you know nothing about Mixer, so what the heck are you doing making a video about this? I understand. I completely agree. I interviewed a real streamer. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Small Entertainment. And I, again, am not a streamer. I'm not a gamer. I know very little about streaming platforms and the only one I am familiar with is Twitch. I've actually never watched any streams on Mixer and it looks like now I won't really be able to. I actually had never heard of Mixer prior to Ninja signing with them about a year ago. Honestly, I thought it was a new platform and them signing Ninja was them like trying to kick off their platform. But no, Mixer was started over four years ago and was originally called Beam before Microsoft took it over and then like rebranded everything. But I wanted to talk about the Mixer shutdown because what I saw mostly about the coverage of the shutdown was people talking about how much Ninja and Shroud had lucked out, and then people laughing at all the streamers who had turned down deals with Mixer to stick with Twitch or Facebook gaming or whatever, because if they had taken those deals, then they would have lucked out the way that Ninja and Shroud had, most likely, and they probably would have only had to do a couple of months of work for the entirety of their page. It really wasn't until I started seeing people covering stories from streamers on Mixer who were now completely losing all access to streaming because they had previously been banned on Twitch that I started seeing more people talk about, you know, smaller, lesser known streamers on Mixer. But again, I admittedly knew very little about Mixer and so I knew that if I wanted to talk about this shutdown, I wanted to interview someone from Mixer. I've been doing many different interviews. I want to do as many as possible and just get my voice out there and talk about my experience as, you know, I'm in the top five females on Mixer. That's great. And That's uh, yeah, I just, Absolutely. I just bought a car. Great. Uh, I would not have bought a car if I would have known Mixer was shutting down. But luckily for me, I saw a tweet from Lindsay saying she was willing to do interviews if anyone wanted to talk to a Mixer streamer. I am Lindsay Wood, a partner on Mixer. Lindsay talked to me about why she chose to stream on Mixer. She also told me about how she was banned off of Twitch and how she was very concerned for her future with streaming because most of her friends at Mixer were going to go stream at Twitch and that wasn't an option for her because of her ban. Yeah. I keep saying it's almost like a breakup. I got fired from my job and my family's yeah. getting ripped apart all at once. Like it's really yeah. crazy. Um, and most of my peers are going to Twitch which pretty much everyone knows about and that's you know a lot of them are getting partnered um with my numbers um there should there shouldn't have been a problem with me getting with partnered and banned on twitch uh it's the reason i moved to mixer it was absolutely devastating again it wasn't nearly as bad as this but it did feel like my like my world was shattering i was i was in five months in and really enjoying it being it being successful from twitch's point of view i guess for the most part i can see you know why they made their decisions but in the end, it felt more like I was a number and not a voice and not a real person who had something to say and a point of view on why I got suspended. Kind of getting more comfortable talking about it because it's something that, you know, you you are embarrassed and it is kind of shameful to get banned from something, especially when I fell in love with it and wanted it to be my career. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really talk about it. People use it against me. Even now, they'll, they'll come into my channel. People who remember me from Twitch, they'll come to my channel and people... So I just kind of kept it to myself, just being that's how I am. I had been streaming for a month, so it was very new. Mm -hmm. Things were going great. Um, I actually planned my sister's 21st birthday, and I flew three of her friends in from high school that moved all across the country. But one of uh, her friends took a liking to streaming because I was streaming kind of setting up in the parties. So she, that night, set up a profile, and we went live on her account. It was it was so fun. We had like 400 viewers. There was Twitch partners in there. Never even verified her email. Like it was that quick. She was doing things, and I kept people were getting mad at me because I was like, okay, stop. Like you can't don't, don't go too crazy. Like you have to just yeah. be more chill. There's terms of service, whatever, whatever. Well, she, her account ended up getting shut down because mm -hmm. of whatever she was doing. Because she never verified her account, she never got an email saying she was suspended. Oh. So we didn't know. So her account just went black and I've never seen an account get suspended. It doesn't say you're suspended. Yeah. So we were like, oh my God, a technical error. <laughs> Let's start up my stream. Oh, so you were circumventing the suspension basically is what they got you for. Called site evasion. She was banned and she was in the background of my stream. I got banned, even though oh. we didn't even know. Tried fighting it and they're like, it's okay, just don't do it again. And I'm like, okay, don't, like, don't worry, I won't do that again. I learned my lesson. Um, but that was another one where you know, kind of felt like my voice wasn't heard. Second time, I don't remember as well. I think it was a little more simple. It was sexual content. Okay. Um, Something I have seen big streamers on Twitch do. Uh, I haven't since since I haven't because I, I haven't been on Twitch. But um, 
a lot of different women under the IRL category as it was back then would dance and just, you know, on camera, I've seen girls in tiny little outfits, little shorts thing, um, you know, but big, big streamers dancing. And I am a, a dancer uh, growing up and I, I've always wanted to be an entertainer and not my um, judgment to, to say whether or not it was too much mm -hmm. uh, or too sexual. I don't think it is because I'm not too sexual of a person, um, but Twitch thought it was. The people that reported me thought it was. If I get enough reports, do they just immediately shut it down? Mm -hmm. Did a Twitch staff member come in and say, yes, she's breaking TOS? But to me, I wasn't doing anything different than what I had seen other partners and streamers do. I crossed the line. I'm still trying to learn this kind of gray, ambiguous TOS that some people are okay doing, but other people aren't. Vinyl Time was for sexual content. I was again dancing on stream, sitting right in this room, mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, whatever, whatever it was. And I was what was called brigaded. So to be brigaded means you are mass reported. Someone was mad that he got banned from my chat by one of my moderators. So he got his friends together and mass reported me and just shut me down. And the, this individual ended up getting their own channel banned because they were going around bragging about what they did to me. They admitted that they did this. Yet my case wasn't re-looked at and, yeah. and anything. Nothing was re-looked at. I've just been gone for two and almost two and a half years. Like I keep saying, I felt like more like a number because I, I had 1,700 followers and I was still new and I was still figuring out my content. And yeah. um, I feel like they just shut me down because of it. And I didn't really get a chance to be looked at. I learned my lesson for sure, if not right after that, of not playing with the lines of TOS, maybe staying much farther away <laughs> from that. I've proven that on Mixer in two and a half years that I have totally been able to handle in terms of service and, and being in the spotlight and, and growing a community. I do deserve a second chance because of it and two and a half years of suspension, especially for, you know, I didn't I didn't do the horrible things that some people do to get banned. There's, there's definitely levels of- um, Severity. Severity, exactly. And I think two and a half years of suspension is definitely punishment enough. And I think that right now this gives gives Twitch a really good chance to show that they, I'm gonna cry. I'm sorry. Well, this is just crazy. Like it's gonna give Twitch a chance to show that they're, they can take care of us better than Mixer could. And that they're willing to give me a second chance. And that's the message I wanna get out on my personal um, experiences because I don't have Twitch as an option. And I know that my content would flourish over there and the other options just don't quite have everything I need. I wouldn't even have been on Mixer. Twitch was my first choice in the first place. It's really hard seeing all my friends go to Twitch and be so successful and me having, to, I'm still on Mixer at this point. I don't know what I'm doing. So, Do you know how um, much more time you have on Mixer? Like you I, we, are, we can stay monetized until the 30th, so five more days from today. Um, and then Mixer's closing on July 22nd. I asked her if she or any other streamers had been given any notice about Mixer shutting down. For the last week and a half up until that moment um, in my hometown uh, in Montana, I drove my sister to Denver to move her in after college. And then we drove up through Wyoming to, um, to Montana. My parents and I decided to drive all through the night and get back to our place earlier. So my parents were sleeping and I was driving and I did not look at my phone one time in all the hours that I was dri had, had driven that night. And the one time I glanced at my phone, I had received multiple missed calls, multiple texts from different streamers and partner friends. And then I have push notifications on for Mixer's Twitter. So I had you know, a notification um, that Mixer had tweeted. And my roommate, who's also a Mixer partner, uh, just sent me like dot, 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 like assuming that I'd heard. And I was like, what happened? And um, she said, you know, Mixer's closing down. And like, haven't you heard? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm driving. It was confusing. We didn't really know what that meant. At first, I thought that I would get to keep my channel. It was just kind of transfer over into Facebook or Facebook was kind of just taking over Mixer. Uh, that's not the case. I learned I, I'm losing everything. 141,000 followers. Uh, countless, you know, subscribers and supporters. And, you know, of course we're, we're hoping that they'll follow us, but you never know. Um, and it was pretty life shattering. Before I move on about the interview, let's talk about what happened the day before Mixer announced that they would be shutting down and partnering with Facebook Gaming. On June 21st, Milan Lee, a former employee at Mixer, shared a tweet that just said Mixer, the black experience with a link to a tweet longer. In this tweet longer, he shared that he was one of the only black employees during his time at Mixer and that he felt based on comments that had been made to him that he was there to meet a diversity quota. Included in that tweet longer was an exchange that Milan had with a manager of his. This is a direct quote from the Twitlonger. My manager decided to give us an analogy. That analogy was, I'm in between a rock and a hard place. 
What I mean is all the partners are my slaves. I own their content. I control their success on our platform. For me, I am the slave master. I own partners. Immediately, I got angry, pissed off, and honestly, I didn't want to work at Microsoft or Mixer anymore. I don't think you need me to tell you that that's terrible and that should never have been said. Mixer responded to Milan's original tweet by saying, Our goal is to build a positive, welcoming, and inclusive team and community. To those sharing your stories, it's unacceptable that we did not provide that for you. We'll be vigilant in addressing this more diligently in the future. Thank you, Milan, and to the entire community. The day after Milan had posted his tweet, Mixer had replied with that message. That same day, Mixer had also tweeted out, Mixer your partners, streamers, and community. Today, we've got some very big news for you. While we've decided to close the operations side of Mixer, we're officially partnering with Facebook Gaming and we're cordially inviting all of you to join. This led to speculation that Mixer had been bought by Facebook. That is not the case. A few days after this was announced, Facebook Gaming took to their Twitter to answer some questions that people have been posing about the shutdown of Mixer and of the details of Mixer partners being able to go over and become Facebook gaming partners. Did Facebook buy Mixer? No, Facebook did not buy Mixer. After Microsoft let us know their plans, we partnered up to give Mixer streamers an option to transition to Facebook gaming. Option is an important word because as an ex-Mixer partner, do I have to stream on Facebook gaming? Definitely not. We'd love to have you, but this is all completely optional. If you do decide to come over, we've got teams of people working on making your transition as smooth as possible. We're offering partner status for Mixer partners and we'll match existing Mixer partner agreements as closely as possible. So Facebook cleared up that they in fact had not bought Mixer from Microsoft, but with how everything unfolded, it's not hard to see the leap that some people made. Mixer is called out for having racism in its company. Following day, Mixer pulls the plug. Doesn't look good. I asked Lindsay what she thought about the timing, if she thought that the Mixer shutdown had been planned, and they just moved up the timeline because of the understandable backlash because of Milan sharing his story, or if they did in fact see the tweet, see the backlash, and rather than work to fix the environment in their company, they just decided to pull the plug and call up Facebook to try and get out of their partner contracts. Milan is actually a personal friend of mine, okay. um, as were many Mixer staff members. It's one reason why this is so heartbreaking, is we, we really were family. Millie, a very, very sweet, um, kind person. And I'm really glad that he came forward and has gotten the attention on this. Um, I actually knew the person that allegedly said this. And um, I mean, I don't have proof beyond what he said, but I definitely believe him and I support him and stand by him and the entire uh, BLM movement. Shocked that that is something that would come out of someone's mouth, mm -hmm. um, especially a person of color. I don't know in what what she was thinking to think that I would be okay to call Mixer partners her slaves and whatever else horrendous thing she said. The two days before that, or the day and then that same day that he posted, um, we also were having a very big Me Too movement across gaming. People are getting banned. People are getting in trouble for things that they've done that women could not speak out about until now. Yes. Um, I was actually preparing to tell my own story. I'm um, trying to get the courage to share my own story within this industry and... Um, Everything happened and it's it's on pause now. And then Milan came out with his post. The head of Xbox Gaming, I believe, Phil, commented um, and said he was going to take care of it. And then the next day they cut off Mixer. We had literally no idea. I would not have bought a new car on the June 8th if I would have known by June 22nd my job and my security and my home was going to be ripped out from underneath me. Staff didn't know. Staff is broken hearted. They're all laid off. I keep saying it's not Mixer as a whole because as a whole, it was very caring. We all loved each other. It was someone above that that was just done they didn't like the numbers they didn't like what was happening i don't know but i i want to know more about it i want people to start asking some questions we were literally like scheduling stuff with mixer and applying for features and and doing all these things and sending in pictures like i don't know all kinds of stuff just thinking normal day-to-day -day activities and then they just sent a tweet like a bad breakup. So that's that. Like I said at the beginning of this video, Lindsay has previously been banned on Twitch and so her options for new streaming platforms to move to are limited to YouTube and Facebook gaming. Of those two, has anyone approached you with any options or? Um, yeah, Facebook has reached out to every Mixer partner. We get, um, we get partnership. It'll transfer over. I'm a gamer. I've always been a gamer. Um, that's how I started. I actually started on Mixer because I was playing so much Fortnite. I was like, why am I not streaming this if I'm playing so much? But I also do cosplaying and body painting and um, tra I travel a lot. And I, I really want, I actually named myself the face of Mixer IRL because that wasn't a thing on Mixer. It still isn't really a thing on Mixer. But I love traveling and going to conventions and showing people and streaming while I'm there. Facebook yeah. doesn't have a space um, in their gaming community for 
creative or IRL options. That's a different, a separate streaming service on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, to my understanding. Um, and so for a lot of creators who are creative, even if they're gamers and whatnot, that doesn't work for us. Uh, YouTube is more open to that, but it's a lot harder to grow on YouTube and to be discovered. For my content, I really think Twitch is where I should be and where I would excel. I've talked to Facebook, um, some smaller, um, newer streaming services have reached out to me, and then I'm doing all I can with my connections to reach out to Twitch. I've, I've been told that they're looking at my case. Though we were talking about the Mixer shutdown, I did think it was important to ask Lindsay what she does as a streamer for her job. Every time something comes around about a creative getting their source of income getting taken away, whether it's demonetized channel on YouTube, their Instagram getting deleted, their streaming platform getting deleted. There are always people who are calling for you to just go get a real job. So I asked Lindsay what goes into being a streamer for her. I went to school, I got my degree right after high school and I tried a couple things with it, didn't love it. I've always been more of a creative, always wanted to be an entertainer, like I mentioned. I never planned, I didn't set out streaming, like I'm gonna be a full-time streamer, this is gonna be my job. It just, I did well enough and eventually I was like, this is amazing. So my degree definitely has come in handy with just personal marketing and stuff. Everyone thinks that streaming is just you sit in front of a computer and play video games all day with people. That is the easiest part of the job, but there is so much more involved with being a full-time successful streamer, learning the software, downloading the right software, getting the right settings, the right camera settings and the right bit rate and the right this and that and quality, like it might not work. Like you could have settings so wrong that your stream won't even go live. So just learning all of that and then dealing with it. I built a computer, learning how to take care of the computer, how to connect everything. I, I'm running two computers right now. Like there's so much to learn in the software and hardware aspect of it. Plus green screens and lighting and camera links. I have three webcams right in front of me right now. When I'm not live, which I usually try to be live for eight to 10 hours a day. At one point I was doing 80 hours a week. The time you put into it is, is just crazy. Every day, multiple times a day, posting on Twitter, responding on Twitter, sharing things, liking things, Instagram, I was advised by my partner manager to post one to two times a day. I post five to 10 times on my Instagram story, plus hopefully every day or other day on my main page, on top of interacting with other people, liking their posts, sharing things that they post, commenting on things to, to really get that sense of community because you, you have to be part of a, this community to get the support. And um, so social media plus taking your own photos and making graphics and planning events and, and tournaments. And I, we actually had to cancel a charity tournament for a Black Lives Matter um, tomorrow on the 26th. Um, but to cancel it because of this. And I just did a, a different Black Lives Matter charity before I left for my trip. And um, I'm trying to do all kinds of events and charity streams and raise money for different things and get people's voices heard. And then on top of that, you're dealing with in chat for eight to 10 hours, people just ripping on you and being mean to you and telling you you look funny and you're ugly and you suck at this and get a real job. That's something that's really hard to deal with at first, but then you learn like, okay, they hate my nose, got it. They hate <laughs> my weight, got it. You gotta get numb to it and learn how to handle it. Um, but then learning, like it's learning how to handle fast chats, how to handle slow chats. Do you talk nonstop? When do you like, when do you talk to people? Do you game and ignore chat? Or like me, talk to your chat while you're gaming and just say, screw the game. I'd rather talk to you guys. Going to conventions and trying to make enough money to, to do that, plus pay your bills. And I, I could go on and on forever about how many things that we have to do behind the scenes. It is 24 seven nonstop work. You don't just hit go live and have a hundred people watching you. You're gonna have zero followers. You're gonna have zero viewers until you put the work in. And then there's, you know, the natural ability. You have to kind of figure out your space in the market and, and figure out how to be you and how to get people to watch you being you. Is there anything else that you want to touch on? Anything else you want to share? A couple of things I want to leave it on. Uh, one is that I personally don't have any hard feelings towards Mixer. Um, I loved Mixer. And I always will. I mentioned earlier, I really think this is a chance for Twitch to show us that they can take better care of us. I'm sorry. I, I just cry so to... easy the way it is. No, I mean, <laughs> but like you, you, you explained it perfectly. Like you guys really had, like you guys were planning your futures on Mixer and now it's just been ripped away from you. This is my passion and this is the first time I've ever felt passionate about something. And like, I'm thankful for Mixer for giving that to me, but now 
I gotta figure out what to do next, and it's scary. After Lindsay and I completed our interview, she submitted her appeal to Twitch, and her ban has since been lifted after two and a half years, and she is officially going to be streaming on Twitch moving forward. There's not a real big conclusion to this video. I just wanted to talk about the Mixer shutdown, and I wanted to interview a Mixer streamer, which I did. For all of the former Mixer streamers that are working on getting their appeals of their bans lifted on Twitch, I wish you all the best of luck. I hope you are all able to find a new home for yourself. I hope that you find a platform that sees you as more than just a number. And that's really going to be it, where you are Mixer streamer, what platform are you moving to? Where do you prefer to watch your live streams? Do you want to get in a live stream? Do you want to be a YouTuber? Do you want to get into this ever-changing, inconsistent world of being on social media and being a creator? Let me know. Comment down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you also like to support me on my Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here. I'll be linking all of Lindsay's social media down below as well. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Honestly, you're stopped. You've got toilet paper behind you. You're ready to I go. I do know the memes. <laughs> the memes. <laughs> it's like a pride of honor back there. It is. <laughs> Thank you, Adam, Alan, Elise, Brighton, Byung, Cameron, Cameron D, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Jason, John, M, Jonathan, Jordan, Kenneth, Kenny, Kevin, Joseph, Kim, Lee, Lisa, Manga, Matt, Matthew, Matthew S, Meme Lord the Red, Michael, Michael J, Nathaniel, Pat, Prylock, Rob, Sam, Stephen, Timothy, Tom, Victor, Wendy, Williams, Andre.